The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the June 17th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time and it's 107 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing that. We'll try to make today's show as pertinent as we can for that hour. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't give us a call, you can always send me an email. Now, not if it's 107 in the afternoon, I mean, you can send me an email, but I likely won't respond. Um, at least immediately, to that email. But if you are listening live right now, we'd love to hear from you. So send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right, I've got all U.S. equity futures trading to the upside. The Dow's up 223. NASDAQ is 130. The S&P's up 35. And the Russell's up 18. Basically, a very small move. What do you mean by that, Steve-O? Well, if you take a look at the last 10-day average price movement in each of these, the average price movement for the Dow was 726 points. We're up 222. The NASDAQ is 420 points. What? That's, that's a daily Average price move. And the S&P, 110 points out there. If we take a look at what transpired over in Asia last night, they had a mixed bag. You had the Shanghai up 32 bucks. You had the Hang Seng up 229 and the Nikkei back 468. Over in uh, uh, Europe this morning, we've got the DAX trading higher up by one and three tenths percent. Very similar to the NASDAQ, which is up one and two tenths percent right now. They kind of trade similarly. So if you do see the uh, DAX close higher and the FTSE close higher, Odds favor that the U.S. indices close higher as well. If we take a look at what's going on in metals right now, gold's off two bucks, silver's down six pennies, platinum's off twelve bucks, palladium's down twenty-one bucks, copper's off uh, two pennies, lights recruit is trading back sixty-three cents, natural gas is off eighteen pennies. We'll take a look at what all that means from a chart standpoint. Thirty-year Treasury is up over one point right now, one thirty-four eighteen. Looks like it wants to move higher. It formed a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom a couple of days ago. I believe price is. Uh, um, over profile levels and should continue higher. You might even get a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on a weekly basis for the 30 year treasury out there. So let's go take a look at what all this. We actually, let's go to our first request out here. And the first request is really to go ahead and uh, uh, take apart the uh, the equity future contract. Specifically, though, and we'll do it both. Specifically, though, is to take a look at the two hour time frame chart. So this is for John or Z in our Tiger's Den from uh, Philly. And so let's go switch over and take a look at those two hour charts. What we'll see in each case, this is one of the reasons I believe that John has uh, brought up the request. Each of them have formed really two bottom patterns out here. The first bottom pattern would be the TD9 count. Each of them form their lows on bar number eight. And so, and then each of them on bar number eight, they happen to be bullish piercing candles. Piercing candles pierced more than halfway into the prior bar out there. That is a bullish reversal signal that confirms Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And in each case, that has led to a test of resistance. So the cool thing, one of the cool things that you and I use, certainly during this show, subscribers have access to all kinds of profile data out there that is provided both the morning and the evening newsletter. But here what we can see and, and what the profiles help us to identify, identify 
is where buyers and sellers are. In this case here, we're taking a look at where the sellers are, and that is at the top of the profile. And the top of the profile for the ES Mini is 37, uh, basically 37.14, 37.13.75, three ticks out there. The actual high, 37.13.50, that took place during the... Uh, what time is it? During the 8 o'clock hour out here, just, just as we we're coming on the air. So that's the level of resistance. So, John, price is above its oscillator and change line. So it's really above a support level and trading into a resistance area. But here's the cool thing. If on a two-hour basis you see a close above the top of that profile, again, the top of that profile, 37.14 uh, is what you should call it, uh, then that's going to suggest that price should go make a move to 38.11.75. We don't know whether price will overtake this level or not. We'll go have to dive down into the short-term time frame charts to see if we can get any other information out here. The ES Mini, that's your uh, – oh, wait a minute. What do I have here? All ES Mini charts? What the Sam heck happened there? No wonder everything was doing the exact same thing. I wasn't looking at that, so now we're going to have to do this here live. I don't know how that happened, uh, but it was happening for me. I can guarantee you that. So let's get this uh, going here. Sorry about that. So the ES Mini, at least, we know what it's doing. It looks like actually each of them are really doing the same thing out here. Uh, Russell 2000, get that uh, contract up, and then we'll... Uh, Make sure we take a look at it. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you've got the ES Mini. We've really already covered that. The right-hand side, we've got the NQ. The NQ has, uh, so the interesting thing here, yeah, this is interesting. So the NQ has already formed bar number seven. Again, they got that TD9 count bottom. You have, um, in the case of the NQ, it only made one bottoming pattern. Did not made a did not make a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Just the TD nine count out there. But price is running into resistance. That's at eleven three thirty three. Now here's the deal. You so if you're bullish, you really don't want to see the high of the last hour. The high was eleven three twenty one seventy five. I mean, you really don't want to see that necessarily taken out because if you do, you'll get to bar number eight. And that says that over the course of the next maybe four hours or so, you could see some type of short-term top that would form out here. That's the message of the NQ. So the NQ has already formed bar number seven. It's working on bar number eight. It's one bar ahead. And, you know, it's, it's just like to drink a lot. It's just one bar ahead of the other three. So, John, I think I would keep my eyes more peeled on the NQ today and its development along the uh, TD9 count pattern out there. As well as the top of those profiles. At the top of the profile, by the way, on the Dow Equity Future contract, that is at uh, 3170. At the top of the profile on the 120 minute chart for the Russell 2000 is 1676.80 out there. But I would be watching for those, uh, at least the NQ. And let's go focus in on the NQ first for a potential uh, TD9 count top that could form. So this current bar is not going to complete. Bar number eight. It's not going to complete till 10. You've got to get bar number 9 to complete. That takes us to noon. And you can always have the bar following bar number 9 that makes that the higher high, excuse me, the higher high for that panel. And that would take us into 2 o'clock. So if you're listening live and it's 1.14 in the afternoon out there, the NQ could be signaling a TD9 count top. I won't know. I can't see into the future. But it could be signaling that as you uh, are listening to the uh, show. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll go take a look at, we'll dive, take a deeper dive into the equity future contract as soon as we get back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to actually our first question that has come in, or second question that has come in. We'll go back and take a look at the equity futures in a, a moment. This one is coming in from uh, Rob inside our Tiger's Den. Rob's question is about ticker symbol XAR. XAR is the uh, aerospace and defense ETF out here. So Rob's question reads like this. Please take a look at XAR. Daily and weekly A to B equals CD downs. Both cross B points with less volume. Not true. The weekly chart has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside with volume, so we'll come back and take a look at that. XAR seems to have bounced off the uh, November 9, 2020 gap. November 9, 2020. So um, is that uh, where this gap here is here? So I've got a uh, gap. Okay, so this is the same thing, yeah. So I'm on the weekly basis. And that gap, the top of that gap is at uh, 91.83. I don't know why my chart isn't really right at that exact spot, but... Uh, We'll try to get it there. 91.83. Okay. So we're just trying to get my chart here to line up with uh, Rob. If this is just an options expiration bounce, would you suggest entering at the bottom of the gap at the minus 90 level? So he's really referring to 91.83. Or wait for the 1026 swing of 85. Maybe neither and sit on the hands until general market trend changes. Well, I would agree with that last statement for sure. But, but or potentially, you know, but so we just want to take a look at how is the aerospace defense area um, trading. So first, let's go to the weekly chart out here because the weekly is going to have a little bit more meaning than the uh, daily out here. So the weekly swing point is the uh, low from uh, the week that began January 24th. That added 421,000 shares. If you look in the upper left hand side at the uh, and at that little data box, it's got a little red. Um, border around it. You'll see 421, 541. That's the volume. When that was passed and cleared, that was cleared on the week that began May 16th, 856,000 shares. So this B point has been crossed with volume out there. So you have it confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. The A point out here is the high from June 21st of the week that began June 21st, the low, the B point, January 24, 2022, and the C point. 2790, yeah, is going to be the week that uh, began May, March 28th. Now, what we can see here, Rob, is this has attained the one to one price level, but price is stronger on the C to D leg than it is on the A to B leg. What do I mean by that? Price is along the strong side, the left hand side out here. 
Price is also below the bottom of its uh, weekly profile, which is 102.57. So because we're on the strong side here, odds favor that this is going to generate more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. I would agree with you that the next par target to the downside is at 91.83 level. But with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern, the easy way to identify whether the market has is attempting to form a bottom is you wait for the bullish reversal candle. If you don't know Japanese candlestick charting, just sign up for Mastering Probability. Do it for 29 days. You'll learn the seven bullish candles and seven bearish candles. I make it very easy, easy peasy, as easy as I can for you. And uh, that is how the market will communicate to you that it is attempting to form bottom. doesn't mean that it will hold, but at least you've got that first sign of what buyers are attempting to do. So you're asking me, would I buy at 91.83? No, because I would wait for a bullish reversal candle. So you've got A to B equals CD to downside on the weekly you've got one on the daily time frame and so on the daily chart out here i don't need to draw in that a to b equals cd pattern and it doesn't matter at this stage here whether it was crossed with lighter volume or not um i say it doesn't matter only because we've got that con confirmation on the daily time frame the a the same a to b equals cd pattern by the way for the daily time frame you'd be looking at that swing point from january 28th that had volume of 80,000 shares that was passed with 1.9 million shares so now you've you've got a confirmed A to B equals C D to the downside on the daily time frame. Now, Rob, you and I may be using different B and C points. Um, I, I'm not really sure. So here's here's the best way to suggest to you why the why the why the swing points that I've chosen are the correct swing points out here. If we take a look, and I'm coming back to the uh, I'm coming back to the trading period of March 30th as well as uh, April the 5th out there. And those highs that were formed are above any prior highs that are, that are, that are out here to my, to my left. So it's not like I could choose the swing point down here from uh, December 1st as my B point be because there's a lower though that forms after it. So that B point absolutely has to be that hammer candle from January 28th on the uh, daily basis for your A to B equals CD point. So here we're gonna get the same values the high actually June 28th. The B point is down here at that hammer candle on January 28th. And then you've got the high, looks like it was the high from March 30th. Let's see, that was 127.90. This one is 127.80. Yeah, so that, that's it. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals C to the downside. There's your one to one level. Again, here, it's just showing us what we took a look at on the weekly time frame. Odds favor price targeting the 87.17 area. Um, but I would wait for a bullish reversal candle. It is really that, uh, that that's how I would take a look at it with regard to the A to B equals CD patterns out there. But um, what we have is additional information. So I want to go take a look at that. That's those white background charts out there. That's the multi-panel chart. So on the monthly time frame, TD9 count top for XAR, price should go target 85.81. On the weekly time frame out here, almost looks a little bit like the uh, uh, NQ out here, the NASDAQ composite. On a weekly basis, you have both wave number seven, that's courtesy of the Chapman wave. Now that cannot be confirmed until you have a higher low. It's gotta be a higher low out there, so that says next week. But what you also have is bar number nine that is completing. Now, the TD9 count, it can be bar number nine, bar number eight, or the bar following bar number nine. So that says that next week, perhaps you could get that TD9 count pattern. That's what you'd like to see is a bottoming pattern on a weekly basis and then go back to your daily chart and find some kind of bottoming signal there. And it could be an A to B equals CD pattern. The other pattern that could be setting up on XAR is a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Last yesterday was bar number seven. So this has the potential over the course of the next uh, three trading sessions to generate a TD nine count bottom. You've got to get you got to get price below bar number seven. Doesn't have to be today. It could be on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, but it has to happen. There's a couple other things that have to happen. A bullish reversal candle here would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, and that would then suggest to move up to its oscillator and change line, Rob, and that would take us into about the 101.90 ish type area out there. So it does make sense to uh, pay attention to. There's multiple patterns, right? You got the A to B equals CD pattern. We've got the TD nine counts that we want to take a look at and you've got the erodes momentum indicator signal out there so i say circle back to this um on uh, tuesday of next week tuesday wednesday maybe right back in and we'll take a look at it and see what what additional information what today's results uh, show us and uh, so forth so i hope that answers your question out there uh but again i believe that the a to b equals cd pattern that i used 
is the correct one to be uh, looking at. And hopefully I've given you enough information to answer your question out there. So I'll wait for the pattern to complete before I go ahead and uh, take a uh, position. Let's go back and while we've got just a few minutes, a few seconds out here, I should say, is look, where's the NQ chart? We were looking at the 420 minute charts out there. Here in the NQ, you have a TD9 count top that formed on the uh, a 60 minute time frame. That has been negated out there. Has been negated? Yeah, it, it was negated out there. That suggests that price wants to run higher. Now look on the 30 minute chart out here. You've got a TD9 count top. Likely, if this rally is going to sustain itself and we've got this momentum, all that's going to take place is price, which basically it's done, is get back to test that red oscillator and change line. That's at 11,267, then take off from there. But here's the key thing you close above this bar number nine out here, that says we move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Welcome back. Uh, so Rob was kind enough to tell me the uh, information, what he was looking at for the A to B equals CD standpoint. And it's really looking at an A to B equals CD along that C to D leg out here and using as a and, and that's fine. But really what I want you to do is and there are always not always, but many times there are several A to B equals CD patterns out there. But you really want to step back and take a look at the larger patterns. Don't don't discount the larger patterns out here. Those are the ones that are really, in my opinion, are the ones that are controlling the uh, the price movement. The other thing here in your A to B equals CD patterns that you choose, um, you really want to see that C to D leg be at about a 0.382 retracement. This one was 25%. 
So it's already kind of a signal that you're forcing that A to B equals CD pattern, you know, versus the larger one that is out there. So uh, I hope I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and especially writing back. Just let me know what you were looking at, which was different than what I was looking at. And hopefully you get the uh, you get you get what I was able to share with you. I know the requests that we have in at the uh, moment. So what I do want to do is I want to go back to that NQ chart as we were just simply going out through the breakout there. Make sure that I clearly articulate what I meant there. So you've got a TD9 count top that has formed out here. That's been confirmed. And if we see a close above that high, that says the pattern will get negated. And that high is 11,321.75. So that's the number to jot down on your pad of paper. Hey, if we're trading above that, it's 1.31 in the afternoon. Okay, so then you've got an additional signal out there. Now, what that would signal, and, and here from a momentum standpoint, because you've got that TD9 count top, we should see the oscillator and change line and price test each other. And if that holds and price continues to move higher out there, that says that the current 30-minute bullish trend should continue. Now, its upside target out here is up at 11,597.60. That is its TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So that, in fact, could be a price target out there for the 30-minute time frame chart. On the 60-minute time frame chart out here, I had mentioned earlier that there was a TD9 count top that formed. It was on this bar right here at 2 o'clock in the morning. That high was 11,293 and a quarter. And price closed. Actually, I take that back. Now that I expand this out, that too is still in place. We have not had a close above that high. So that number again is 11,293.25. I don't recall what it was on the 30-minute uh, chart uh, that I gave you. Uh, but closes above both of those are suggesting we'd have. Now, on the 60-minute time frame chart, you've got your battles up top. And your battles up top are profile levels, at least current profile levels, at 8.32 in the morning. And those are at the 11.310 level. So expect a battle there. We've already seen that. Next, if you would clear that, 11.353. And then above that, 11.395. If price can close above 11.395, I'm not saying that it will. I'm saying if it does, then what we're looking at is move to 11.724. Now, if... This TD9 count on the 60-minute and 30-minute take hold, and we see price trade below the 30-minute. Let me just uh, sh uh, shorten up this chart here so that we can look at the 30 and the 60. So if the oscillator and change line does not hold on the 30-minute chart, then where price will go target is a 60-minute oscillator and change line, 11,221. And if price closes below that, which is a real possibility out here, it would be highly unusual based upon all the selling that we've seen to not see some kind of selling an hour from now right out of the gates. And maybe that's what these TD9 count signals are providing for you and I. So if price were to close below that 11,220 area, and that's going to move a little bit lower as price moves lower, then where price would target is its breakout level. That breakout level on the 60-minute uh, time frame is 11,145. On the 30-minute time frame, it's 11,215. So those would be areas that I would be watching if price is able to close below the red, their red oscillator and change line levels out there. Not much else to report on the NQ. Uh, let's go ahead. The request was to thoroughly take a look at the ES Mini as well. So let's go pull up, pull up its uh, multi time frame charts out here. And in the multi time frame charts, well, the other thing that you might no might have noticed, I didn't cover it, was the uh, NQ and the ES, and, and all of them are really the same thing when we take a look at the daily time frames. And the daily time frames show that yesterday was bar number seven of a TD9 count. Now, I don't know if this pattern will form or not out here. First, you got to get to bar number eight. That's today. And bar number eight says you have to close below bar number four, the close of bar number four. Well, what was bar number four's close? That was 37.5350. And we're at 37.02. So if you're looking for that to be a potential pattern, you don't want to see price close above that level. If it does close above that level in the ES mini, the TD9 counts that you see there will vanish. So we won't have that pattern. And we'll just simply be back the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside that are already in existence out there. We're just waiting for some type of bullish reversal candle to form to uh, confirm that bottom. And, and ideally here, you get the bullish reversal candle in, in all four of the equity future contracts, but certainly most of the U.S. cash indices as well out there. So when we take a look at the ES Mini, um, it's 16-minute time frame chart. Let's see if this TD9 count top is held. It has. So it also has a TD9 count top and may be suggesting a move back to 36.85. And the reason is, is because this Rotsman indicator bottom formed on the 60-minute chart. And if this was just a counter trend move, 
And on a 60-minute basis, that's what we have to term it as right now. Well, you don't, you don't have to, but I'm going to. And the reason I'm going to is because this was a bullish structured profile. And when price closes below a bullish structured profile for two consecutive bars, then it suggests price is heading lower out there doesn't guarantee it, suggests that price is headed lower. It also tells us that if any move higher uh, is just a counter trend move, then where price would find resistance would be either be at the bottom, but more likely the center of that profile. And that, in essence, is what has unfolded here uh, this morning. So a close of up 37.16 says, well, one, the TD9 count top will have failed, and then that price should then go target 37.37. But price is trading below the bottom of that bullish structured profile, and that's what suggests that we could see a run down into about the 36.85 or even 36.65.25, which is the TD9 count breakout level for the ES Mini. So that's what its chart is communicating to us. The no, that was a 60 minute chart. Now, I'll just make sure that was a 60 minute chart that we were looking at on the 30 minute time frame chart out here for the ES mini. What do we have? Not much. We had a, a seventh wave move uh, out here that formed at two o'clock this morning, took price back to the bottom of its bullish structured profile as well as its red oscillator and change line, and that price moved higher here. So that pattern here is negated. That's that seventh wave move out there. So really, it's going to be the 60 minute time frame chart, and I believe the 60 minute chart that's really controlling what price is uh, doing out here. Um, you've also got that 120-minute resistance level, but it's really the 60-minute chart, John, that I think is controlling the price movement and that I would be focused on today for your signal information. Uh, so with no other requests out here, let's go take, let's, let's switch it up and from take a look at the equity futures to take a look at uh, Goldilocks. So let's go take a look at what gold is doing out here. Gold has tested and rejected the uh, bottom of its daily profile, I believe that's 1835, and likely to, um, and it's going to look different here on uh, this uh, chart, the white background chart versus the black background chart out there. They've got different profiles. Both are correct. The black background charts have got the 1839 level. Both tie into the same top of the profile, which is 1879. So that's your real resistance area out there. Now, as we take a look at Goldilocks, just looking for some intraday signals out here. So more, more likely than that, what gold is going to do, it's going to go target resistance again. And the reason why I say that is price is above its oscillator and change line. And uh, it's dealing with uh, where some sellers reside. It's a bearish structured daily profile, slightly bearish structured. So they're lined up at both the center and the top. The price should make its way to 1879. Now, the five hour time frame chart, which formed a TD9 count bottom, where price stalled. And it looks like we've got a confirmed sell the D point pattern, was right at a breakdown level at 1861.90. Price actually got up to a high of 1861.50. Missed it by 40 cents on an $1,800 instrument? Really? How cool is that? Oh, great. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got Dow Equity Futures up 179, NASDAQ up 116. Gold, which we're looking at right now, is trading out at 1853. That's up three bucks out here. And so the real resistance level. So in order to uh, get that move up to 1879, and this is the cool thing out here, is we need to see a close. Now I'm back on the five-hour time frame chart. We need to see a close above its TD9 count breakdown area. That's at the 1861.90 level. If we get that, then and there's no reason to think that gold uh, won't be able to do that. Price found resistance. Um, at a an, at a natural spot out there, but it, that's what price needs to take out to give us that confirmation that we're headed to 1879 out here on a 60 minute time frame chart. You've got a nice TD nine count top that formed, and so if price can close above that level, that level by the way is the high of the day, and that high is at 1861.50. So that's another level to be watching. Now this TD nine count top did its work already, and its work was to take price back to support. In this case here, it was the bottom of its bullish structured profile out there. Price right now is trying to take out its green oscillator and change line. A green oscillator and change line tells us one thing. Well, two things. One, it tells us that the price oscillator is above zero. That is a bullish to neutral condition. Right now, it's neutral unless price closes above the green oscillator and change line. Then we would have a rising price oscillator above zero. That is a bullish condition, and that would say price would go target the next round of sellers, which happened to be sitting at 1858.10. But what you and I know is that gold would need to close above today's high so far, and that's at 1861.50. They then give us a suggestion that price move up to the 1870 level. That's where the next round of sellers could or should be sitting in a 60-minute time frame chart for Goldilocks out here. So um, watch these. Uh, I'd say watch that 186190 level. That's going to be key to uh, whether price is going to move higher or not. Now I've been talked about price moving lower out here, uh, even with those TD nine counts, because price has held support. If price fails, in other words, price gold starts trading lower. You've got that TD nine count top on the 60 minute time frame chart. If price closes below 184430, then that's a signal that price is going to make its move to the 1827 level. So that would be the downside uh, target that I would see inside of gold based upon the chart patterns that we're looking at as we speak right now. Let's take a look at natural gas. Natural gas, we're going to look at the uh, August contract out here. Um, kind of an interesting pattern uh, that is out here. And the interesting pattern on the daily time frame is going to show us, as soon as this thing here gets totally populated, is going to show us that actually conditions are still somewhat bullish. And here's what I mean by that. And really, this just takes into account what you and I have already been discussing during the day with regard to profiles, bullish or bearish structure profiles, uh, topping patterns, which in the case of the uh, August contract for natural gas, confirmed both a TD9 count top. You can see that was way back here on the trading day of uh, May the 25th. That high was never taken out, which means a close above. It can be spiked above, but it's really the close. The, the essence of price is really the body of the candle. Uh, the, uh, the wicks or the shadows are nothing more than the extreme emotions during that time period, that session. But you've got a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And that took what I want you to take a look at is the daily profile. This is a bearish structured daily profile. Remember when price closes, we were talking about profiles trading or price trading below a bullish structured profile, I believe, uh, and how the center becomes the uh, the counter trend line. Here on a bullish structure, it's the exact opposite. We flip it, and the center here becomes the counter trend move. So in a bullish market where price is just pulling back and retracing, 
Well, we have to make a determination. Is this a significant change in trend or is this just a natural pullback to a level of support? And here we can see that big move from four days ago, big wide ranging bar, which always says be concerned. But look at where price stopped. It was right at basically the center of that bearish structured daily profile. That is a suggestion that the move lower that we've seen here in natural gas is nothing more than just a counter trend move. Now, the confirmation of that would be getting back above the top of that profile. And that's at $7.62. Then price has to run up or should run up if it can do that, run up to its oscillator and change line currently printed about 842. And it would be a close above a green oscillator and change line that would say, okay, natural gas is headed back to its highs. Not going to say that it's going to take out those highs, but that's where it would be headed to. So if there is a close below 7.20, 7.20, then what that says is okay, this was this is more this is not a counter trend move to the downside. And instead, price is going to go seek out the 635 level or this is the daily chart, maybe make its way down to 538. But as we speak right now, we're going to go with this is just a counter trend move to the downside. Still looks bullish out here. But the real confirmation as to what might also be going on would be to take a look at its intraday charts out here. And when we take a look at the intraday charts, the one thing that is missing is any kind of a bottom signal. I think this has all been updated properly. Yeah, no, no, no bottom signal uh, to, to uh, speak about here. But what else, if anything, can we glean from the... Uh, from the uh, intraday charts out here. I'd say it's a 30-minute chart as I look at these that would provide you with the most amount of information. And what I mean by that specifically is this formed a TD9 count top, and it does this at uh, 8, 7.30 this morning, and then price pulls back in this natural gas contract that we're uh, looking at. And price is now trying to regain its uh, profile, the current profile. Um, if price is able to, so the, the confirmation on a daily basis, that it was just a counter trend move to the downside would be price close, in my opinion, would be price closing above the uh, intraday high. And that's at $7.56. If you see a close above that, then that's going to signal that natural gas is likely headed to seven ninety eight out there. So that big move to the downside on that daily base, that big wide ranging bar so far was nothing more than a counter trend move back to an area, a level of support that you and I would have anticipated. And that is one of the coolest things about these uh, profiles out there. I believe we've got a caller on the line. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, CLF is what you're calling about, uh, is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, tell the folks uh, what you're doing and how I can best help you. That is Cleveland Cliffs, uh, which closed yesterday at 1691. Yeah, I sent you an email. Maybe it didn't come through. Um, ah, okay. I, I, I was looking at a couple of the steel uh, stocks, and, and this is one of them, and then the other one was U.S. Steel, and they kind of have you know the same type of pattern. And it goes back a little bit to what you're looking at, that XAR. They have, uh, looks like they're in the midst of AB equals CD patterns, and I was just hoping you could take a look at uh, where those could potentially complete would there be some level of, you know, support or something that would make sense where that would play out at that same level? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at that Cleveland uh, Cliffs out here, which uh, yesterday traded into its uh, swing point from January 24th. That swing point had 35 million shares. Yesterday's volume was uh, 20 million shares. So the first pattern uh, or, or a pattern to look at is how does price uh, – so – we, we close below the swing point on lighter volume, not a guarantee that price will get down and test the bottom. But the, but if it does, then what we'd be looking for is a test of 1581 on less than 35 million shares. And that could be a test rejection of a swing point. And that in itself could be a uh, bottom signal. Oh, I'm on the – give me a moment here, Brent. Let me change uh, uh, screens. Sorry about that. So here's the black background screen. You'll see at 1718, that was, again, the swing point that we're taking a look at, folks, was from the trading day of January 24th, which had volume of $35 million. Yesterday was attacked with $20 million. You close inside it, price might attack the bottom, which is 1581. Brent mentioned the A to B equals CD down pattern. The B point out here, and I'll draw that in, but the B point is a trading day of May 12th, 19 million shares. When that was passed, it was with 18. Then on the next day, uh, 23 million. So I'd say we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, which we'll draw in when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. The 
reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Cleveland Cliffs with Brent and Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, you gave me a complicated uh, 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 instrument here to uh, to analyze, um, and what I mean by that is, we've got the confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside pattern that suggests. And I've just drawn this in on the weekly time frame chart for us, Brent. So on the daily, we already talked about price testing a swing point. The weekly chart here, you've got volume already of 87 million. The uh, swing point had 88 million, so it's going to pass that certainly with volume. It suggests to move back to the uh, 1092 or 718 level. But at the same time, prices trade, and this is why it's complicated, prices trade into the swing point on its weekly basis. That's the swing point from January 24th, similar to what we looked at on the daily time frame, with much lighter volume. That had 145 million shares, and there was no way we're going get, to get to 145 million shares today. So it's pulling back into an area of support, potential level of support, with lighter volume. And when we look at the monthly time frame chart, we can see that price is sitting on support, and that is the bottom of its monthly profile at 1689. And so how does that make this complicated, analyzing this stock chart? Well, is it the A to B equals CD pattern that's going to unfold, or is it some other pattern because price is sitting at support or pulling back, uh, sitting at support on the, on the monthly, but pulling back into some support areas with lighter volume on the other charts? And so when I change over, Brent, and take a look at the white background charts out here, 
what we're going to see is on a weekly basis, this is going to complete bar number nine near its breakout level of 1771. And on a daily basis, it has a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that's triggered. And if you got a bullish reversal candle today, that would confirm at least a short-term bottom or at least a bounce in 1925 or I would say at least 2098. What questions do you have based upon what I've just shared with you? Because we only have about 15 seconds or so. No, I appreciate it, Steve. That's something that has to be considered. This might uh, be as far as it goes. And so I'll yeah, keep an eye on that. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, and, and none of this, well, I, I wasn't planning on doing anything right away, but I'll keep an eye on it. And then and the same with U.S. Steel. So Perfect. maybe ne next week you'll get a chance to look at that as well. So just have yourself a wonderful weekend. And thanks you so too, much Brent. for your help, Steve. You too, Brent. And everybody else out there, have a great weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. Take care, folks. Building wealth.